Hi, I'm Laura Sherman with Insights Beyond Insurance. Today, I'm here with Katya Ziegerling, VP of Collections with Berkeley One, a Berkeley company, to talk about luxury wearable collectibles. Think handbags to limited edition sneakers. Over the years, investors worldwide snatched up these luxury physical assets to wear or collect and to hedge against inflation and stock market volatility. In a recent report by Credit Suisse, they projected handbags to be the best collectible investment in 2023 over wine, art, or jewelry. Katia, why have collectibles like sneakers and handbags exploded in popularity over the past few years? Indeed, the rise of certain social media platforms like Pinterest and Instagram have been crucial in disseminating visual ideas. This has been a boom for creative industries in particular, such as art and fashion. Combine this with the ability to follow style icons, athletes, celebrities, and other tastemakers, and we now have access to global trends from Nairobi to Copenhagen to Osaka, in addition to the usual fashion capitals like New York, London, and Milan. Fashion, including clothes, handbags, and shoes, are ways that people express their visual and cultural tastes, as well as status and aspirational status. With all this visual information, a style enthusiast can be constantly stimulated and really hone in on what they would like to acquire. So I guess I shouldn't be worried that my guys um, follow luxury brands on social media, considering a staggering 78% of Gen Z do as well. Obviously, within that context, some brands are more popular than others, and some have become collectibles that get bought and sold at really high resale prices. Over the past 10 years, some luxury handbags have increased in value by 83%, outperforming almost every other luxury good on the list. According to the 2022 resale report from The Real Real, those prices have gone up substantially this year, with some sell for much as over 55% over the retail value, right? Um, so can you speak to the handbag market in, in particular? Absolutely. So handbags are both functional and stylish, so the perfect combination. Aesthetically, you can also appreciate them as sculptural objects. As an art historian, I certainly do. <laughs> now, there are a lot of trendy luxury brands making coveted bags that attract all genders, from handheld bags to the newly cool waist bags, formerly known as fanny packs. Cool again. Uh, yes, to <laughs> luggage. Yet, when it comes to collector values for handbags, that category really refers to handbags that resell at the same or higher than value as their retail price. And very few luxury bags actually meet this uh, definition. For example, in 2021, 80% of Louis Vuitton's handbags were priced at $1,600 or higher, according to a recent Wall Street Journal article. Now, of those luxuriously priced handbags, I would say that less than 2% are collectible. Those would be items such as limited edition artist collaboration bags, for example, the Artie Capuchin series, which was limited to 300 examples each. Wow. Um, indeed, all handbags are not created equal or great investments as collectibles. Coveted brands of Hermes, Kelly and Birkin, as well as Chanel, dominate the collectibles market. They have to be in mint condition and rare. So why does Hermes Birkin bags in particular often get such crazy high prices? Hermes bags indeed are the some of the most expensive bags in the world, ranging anywhere from $9,000 all the way up to half a million. According to the Art Market Research 2021 study, Birkin bags increased 42% in value at auction from 2019 to 2020. Now the bags are handmade in France from luxury and exotic leathers and produced in limited quantity. It takes a single expert craftsman up to 40 hours to produce a Birkin bag. And the stitch on which the brand's reputation is based, the saddle, uh, cannot really be replicated by a machine. It needs to be done by hand uh, because it takes two needles to simultaneously pass through the same seam to produce a Birkin correctly. And if done correctly, the saddle stitch will never ever unravel. So high quality, limited supply and high demand are among the, the reasons that Hermes handbags are among the highest value uh, brands and also have the highest resale value of the luxury handbags. They really are truly pieces of art. So now I understand why only 12,000 Birkin bags are done every year based on that time. So t what about collector sneakers? Indeed, we go from the handbag down to the feet. So Hermes started as a company focused on equestrian furnishings, such as saddles, and Louis Vuitton began as a luggage company. 
Now, both brands trace their history back to the 19th century. And I start with this because, by contrast, collectible sneakers are a very 21st century genre, deeply embedded in sports and music culture. It's driven by passionate fans who gather online and at conventions such as SneakerCon to collect and discuss silhouettes, grails, and drops. Now, specific sneakers are coveted specifically because of their design, technology, and backstory. Certain sneakers by Converse, Adidas, and Nike have achieved cult status and are highly sought after. A few highly prized examples were previously worn by icons. For example, a pair of Nike airships were worn by Michael Jordan in 1984, and they sold for $1.4 million at Sotheby's in 2021. And Kanye West's Nike Yeezy brand uh, were sold for $1.8 million the same year. Now, I have to say those were actually worn by West at the 2008 Grammys. So they become collectibles because of the person who wore them, as well as being unique. Wow. Well, as you know, Katia, I have two teen boys in the household, and their knowledge of fashion and collectibles is, are, are ubiquitous, right? Um, and if millennials were digital natives, it appears Gen Z are kind of luxury good natives. Um, these generations are expected to account for as much as 70% of the global luxury market by 2025. These brands have started targeting customers at a significantly younger age, and they're learning about it through social media and music. What impact will that have on the true collectible market in the future? Uh, good question. So, new generations have new tastes, absolutely clear. Yet, while it's difficult to predict what they will like, there is general consensus that luxury goods, like the handbags and the sneakers we have been discussing, are entry products into other collectible areas, such as watches and wine, collector cars, and ultimately, art. This is why auction houses are actively selling collectible luxury goods, like sneakers and collectible handbags. Forbes magazine actually had an article on collecting sneakers back in 2017, and their first piece of advice was, seek the help of a millennial. <laughs> Millennials and Gen Z have grown up in a uniquely visually saturated environment, and it will be interesting to see how their taste in collecting evolves as they acquire more purchasing power with age and what they choose to purchase. Social media has perpetuated a lot of hype cycles in visual culture, whether it's artists, designers, NFTs, or collectibles. And the marketplace eventually distinguishes between hype and long-term value. I expect quality, craftsmanship, and exclusivity will remain the top criteria for collectible luxury products. These are certainly the criteria that apply, loosely translated, into other areas such as collector cars, whiskey, wine, and art. In the art world, we talk about the primary market, buying the work of the artist from a gallery, a dealer, or even the artist. The buyer is the first owner. Then there's the secondary market. As you, you've referenced, the secondary market is where collectors often purchase coveted sneakers and handbags. Indeed. The secondary market has been vital to the history of art. Uh, that's basically how collectors and museums are able to acquire historical works. When applied to our discussion on collectibles, such as luxury handbags and sneakers, the secondary market is a prime transaction area. Reselling is so easy with today's numerous resale platforms, from auction houses to vetted online luxury retailers like Vestiaire Collective and The Real Rail, which you've mentioned. For sneakers, the estimated resale market in the U.S. ranges between two to $10 billion, according to a variety of news sources. Sneakerheads congregate at platforms like StockX and KickGame. The places I've mentioned vet the authenticity of what they sell, and this is critically important. The secondary market is often the only place where you can find the rarest and most coveted pieces. In the art world, as well as the luxury goods, fakes abound, so you need to practice due diligence in acquiring authentic objects. Makes sense. I've heard you speak about the collaboration between artists and designer brands. Can you tell us more about this new phenomenon and the impact that it has on the art market? Indeed. Both fashion and art are centered around aesthetics, design, and materials, so the synergy between the two is very natural. Many fashion designers have been outspoken about the art they like. For example, Jonathan Anderson, currently at the Madrid-based luxury brand Lueve, collects ceramics and is so passionate about it that he has established the Lueve Foundation Craft Prize. I think Anderson is really tapping into the craft and sculptural sensibility that is shared by the best designer artists of collectible objects. 
During the Renaissance, roughly 500 years ago, there were guilds for craftspeople, whether you were a cabinet maker, glass maker, sculptor, or painter. They were all professions that required skill, and there were beautifully made cabinets, decorative arts, and sculptures. I believe this sensibility has carried through to the market for collector luxury goods. Virgil Abloh, the previous creative director at Louis Vuitton, studied architecture, and at his 2019 exib exhibition at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago, Figures of Speech, there was a display of about 20 sneakers that he had designed. He was a designer who really exemplifies how the previous separation between streetwear, high art, craft, and decorative art are currently in flux. As you know, Louis Vuitton recently announced that the musician Pharrell Williams will be their new creative director. So expect more visionary thinking supported by a technically talented team of craftspeople who can execute the vision. Well, I want to wear my cool sneakers and carry my stylish handbag. After all, they are very functional. But I expect that the collector value comes from them not being worn. Is that correct? Uh, that is. Yeah, so how do we care for these collectibles? Certainly, for shoes, keep the shoe boxes and all the receipts. For handbags, keep the dust bag and all of the tags and also the cards of authenticity. As for care, for sneakers, stable humidity and ambient temperature are important. Be sure to avoid placing your sneakers in the garage and attics where the extreme temperatures can dry out the glue and actually cause cracking. For handbags, keep them in their dust bags and in places away from vermin and flies that may be attracted to the leather or to the textiles used in the, making the bag. Alternatively, some collectors display their handbags and sneakers in custom-built shelves. If you do display such objects, be sure to keep them away from the direct sunlight, which can lead to fading and discoloration over time. I like to direct enthusiasts to a recent article in Architectural Digest featuring the home of the musician Drake. He's actually a collector of both handbags and sneakers, and the display shelves are really gorgeous. Well, let's talk about how to insure and protect these collectibles. Tell us a little bit about insuring them. If you have a homeowner's policy or a condo insurance policy, you will have some coverage for the contents of your home. Collectible fashion items you own could be covered by that, though you need to review the valuation clause. Also be sure to keep your invoices and create pho photographic documentation. For the examples of collectible sneakers and handbags we've discussed, where again, where the resale value would be the same as or higher than the retail price, you may be able to schedule these items on a valuable article's insurance policy. Every insurance provider will have specific stipulations, as this is an emerging area of collecting. We always recommend that you speak with your insurance broker to get the best advice. Now, as you can tell, Laura here is quite passionate about this topic, and I'm certain would enjoy having a conversation about your area of collecting passion. Absolutely. But to summarize, right, um, we should work with our independent insurance advisor to ensure that your homeowner policy contents limit is adequate to protect your fashionable items, and remember that your deductible would apply. Scheduling a collectible handbag or sneakers are really reserved for the truly rare and unique pieces like we discussed, and only currently available through a few select insurers. Well, thank you, Katia, as always, for such a fun and exciting discussion on the luxury goods space. While handbags, watches, and jewelry are relatively more approachable entry points than old master painting, luxury goods still only account for a very small portion of the major auction sales. I think we're going to be seeing even more of an impact with these luxury passion investments in the future. Thank you again, and for more risk mitigation tips, check out our insights page on our website.